Uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's class. Uh, last time we talked about uh the introduction of digital circuits. Right, we talked about the introduction of, uh, the chapter digital circuits. So in today's class we're gonna continue on that chapter. Uh, but before we do that, I want to quickly review what we have learned in the last class. Uh, in the previous class we start with the introduction. Uh, we start with the Yes, we start with the introduction of two types of signals. Uh, the first one is digital signal, which only has two states, uh, which can be represented by either zero or one. Right. The second type is analog signal, uh, which has infinity states. The benefit of using digital signal is the digital signal is more robust to noises compared to analog signals, uh, because we can easily recover the digital signal, the original digital signal from the uh, corrupted uh, signals. But if an analog signal is corrupted with noises, then uh, it is hard and sometimes impossible to recover the original information. Right? Uh, we also introduce three types of logical gates. The first one is the logical AND gate. The logical AND gate has, three, has two or more inputs. And here in this diagram, I use AB to represent uh, two inputs case. It has only one output, uh, which in this diagram, I use letter C to represent. The functionality of logical AND gate is the output C equals to the production of A and B, which is A times B, right? In terms of choose table, uh, uh, by the way, choose table is a table which list all combinations of input and the corresponding output. So for two input case, we have four rows, uh, which means we have four possible combinations, right? Uh, the first one is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and the last one is 1, 1. The corresponding output is 0, 0, 0, 1, and you can do the um, calculation because C equals to A times B. C equals to C equals to A times B. Uh, to easily to easily find out what's the output for the corresponding input, and the second logical gate we introduced is the OR gate. Uh, this is the diagram of of the OR gate, and you can see AND gate and OR gate are pretty similar, but the difference is for the logical OR gate, the left hand side is a half cycle, right? Uh, that's the difference between the AND gate and OR gate, and also uh, for logical OR gate, there's a tip. There's a tip on this side, uh, on the right side, but for the end gate, there's no tip. It's a very smooth curve uh, on the right side, right? Uh, logical OR gate also has two or more inputs, uh, but in this diagram, I show two input case, uh, which I use letter A and B to represent. The output is C, and that equals to A plus B, right? The functionality of OR gate is summation. Uh, the choose table also has four rows if you have two inputs um, and the corresponding output is 0, 1, 1, 1. Uh, I want to emphasize the last row because uh, some people ask me why the last row is 1, it's not 2, because 1 plus 1 is 2, right? Because A, B, C, they're all digital signals, right? As we mentioned earlier, digital signals only has two states it either be zero or one. There's no number larger than one. If you have a value larger than one, then that is one. That is equivalent to one. Okay. All right, here I list some uh, experience formulas, such as A times A is A. A times one is A. A times zero is zero. A times B equals to B times A. Right. Those are uh, experience formulas for uh, logic AND gates. For logical OR gate, if you have A plus B plus C, that is equivalent to A plus B plus C, and you can do the B plus C uh, initially or at the first place. And A times B plus C equals to A times B plus A times C, uh, just like our normal operations, right? And here we have A plus zero equals to A, uh, that is also very intuitive because uh, 0 plus anything is the original input. A plus A bar is 1, A plus 1 is 1, and A plus A is A. Okay. 
Right, the last one is the logical or not gate. Not gate is also called the logic inverter. Uh, it only has one input A and the output is A bar, uh, which is uh, which means not A or the opposite of A, right? Uh, in terms of choose table, if you have input A, uh, the input if the input A is zero, then the output A bar is one. If the input A is one, the output A bar is zero. And I also give you an example of uh, how to use uh, these experience formulas. Experience formulas to simplify a Boolean exploration. And a Boolean exploration is a combination of logical and or or not gates, right? Uh, and also show you how to use, how to draw a logical circuit to represent the simplified logical expiration. Uh, at the beginning of today's class, I want to use another example to enhance the understanding of that concept. Uh, so here in this example, F, uh, which is a Boolean expiration, expiration f equals to a bar plus b bar plus a plus b together bar right uh, so in this boolean expiration we have two inputs a and b we have one output uh, that is f uh, so without doing any simplification jobs uh, you can directly draw a logical circuit that represent f right because uh, we only have two inputs uh, we have three turns in this boolean expiration let me use one, two, three to represent, right? And uh, F is one plus two plus three, right? It's the summation of these three terms. So the first term is A bar. So uh, the original input is A. We need a logic inverter to get A bar. That's the first term. The second term is B bar. Uh, the original input is B, and we need a logic inverter to get B bar. That is turn number two. For turn number three, it's a little bit complicated because that's the summation of A and B and also the invert of A plus B, right? So uh, we need a logic OR gate to get A plus B and we need a logic inverter to get A plus B bar and that's the third term. Uh, finally, F is the summation of these three terms. So we just need a logic OR gate to sum them together. Uh, there's a detail of this logical circuit, which is here we have some cross lines, right? For instance, uh, this line and this line is crossed. Uh, and these two lines are touched together. If you have a two lines, two cross lines touched together, then you draw a dot between these two lines, right? That means these two lines are touched, are touched together. Uh, but sometimes you have cross lines, but these two lines are separate. Are separate, then you don't need to draw a dot. You don't need to draw a dot be in the center, in the, in the connection of these two lines. That means these two lines are separate. For instance, here in this part, in this intersection, uh, this line is separate with the horizontal line. So there's no dot between these two lines. But these two lines, they are connected together. So you need a, a dot to connect these two lines together. Right. All right, so that's the uh, logical circuit without simplification. Uh, and you can see it's, uh, it's kind of complicated, but it's not that crazy, right? Because uh, the original Boolean expiration is uh, rather simple or easy. Uh, but how about can we simplify this logic expiration? Can we um, get a simpler logical circuit uh, which represent the same Boolean expiration, F, uh, which represent the same output, F? The answer is yes. But here we need to borrow the De Morgan's law. Uh, De Morgan's law says if you have A plus B together bar, that is equivalent to A bar times B bar. And if you have A times B together bar, that is equivalent to A bar plus B bar. Okay, that's for two input cases. 
for three input cases if you have a plus b plus c together bar that is equivalent to a bar times b bar times c bar and if you have a times b times c bar that is equals to a bar plus b bar plus c bar okay so how to memorize these um, formulas there's a very easy way to help you memorize these formulas which is uh, break the line change the sign okay so what that means if you have a plus b together bar the line means the bar on the top of a plus b right if you want to break the line then that becomes a bar and b bar after you break the line you need to change the sign between a and b the original sign is a summation after uh, using the morgan's law you need to change the sign to multiplication uh, you only have two choices for signs uh, it either be summation or multiplication right so if the original sign is summation then after the demarcation law the sign will be uh, multiplication right and here in this example we have a times b bar uh, the original sign is multiplication and after you break the line you change the sign from multiplication to summation right so that's the demarcation law uh, so how can Demarcus law help us to simplify a complicated uh, logic expression? Let's also use the, uh, the example f. We have a bar plus b bar plus a plus b together bar, right? So here in the third term, as you can see, we have a, we have a plus b together bar. And we can break the line in the middle of a and b and change the sign correspondingly. So after we break the line, that becomes a bar and b bar the original sign is summation so after the morgan's law we change the sign to multiplication right so we have a bar plus uh, a bar times b bar all right after using the morgan's law you can see the first term the first term and the third term uh, these two terms has a common factor which is a bar right so you can take a bar out and uh, the remaining thing, the remaining terms are a bar times 1 plus b bar plus b bar. And 1 plus anything is 1 based on our uh, experience formulas here, this one. a plus 1 is always 1, right? And a bar times 1 is always a bar or uh, anything times 1 is uh, the original thing. So the final result becomes a bar plus b bar and if you draw this logical circuit it's much simpler than um, the original one right because you only have two turns and you just need to sum them together you have original a and b as two inputs you use logic inverter to get the invert of a and b and then you sum a bar and b bar together to get uh, the final result f okay Alright, so let me show, let me give you another example. Uh, and uh, this example actually is in your homework. It's, it's one of your homework questions. So uh, let's do this question together. In this Boolean expiration, we have AB times A plus C together bar plus CA bar. Okay. So a common mistake, um, or not not like a common mistake but uh, sometimes people will directly draw the logical circuit uh, that represent this boolean expiration but uh, sometimes it's okay if the original expiration is simple and uh, not complex but sometimes if the original expiration is complex uh, then the logic circuit the, the corresponding logical circuit can also be very complex uh, so the better way is you always simplify a logic expression first uh, by either using De Morgan's law or using experience formulas. So in this example, you can see A plus C bar together bar, this term, uh, we can use De Morgan's law, right? We can break the line between A and C, and that becomes A bar and C bar, and change the sign between these two terms. So the original sign is summation. After using the Demarcus law, the sign between A bar and C bar becomes multiplication plus C A bar, right? And that equals to here, 
we have an interesting combination. We have A and A bar, right? So as you can see, A and A bar multiplied together, that equals to what? Uh, I didn't write it here. Let me uh, write it. Let me write it here. A times A bar is always zero, right? And we verified that uh, last time. So you have a input times the input inverter that is zero and anything times zero is zero so the first term is gone is zero plus c a bar and that is equivalent to c a bar right so you see the final result is much simpler than the original exploration and when you draw the logical circuit to represent this boolean exploration you just need input c input a and you need a logic inverter to flip a and multiply them together right that's c a bar which is f okay all right so that's how we use the morgan's law to simplify a logic exploration um, and another very important um, knowledge of this chapter is uh, decimal numbers and binary numbers Uh, we use decimal numbers in our daily life, right? For instance, uh, if I want to represent a, dec a decimal number, uh, for instance, if I want to represent 6,163, uh, this number is a decimal number, right? Uh, this The first digit, 6, actually is representing 6,000, right? It's not uh, simply 6. It, it means 6,000. The second digit, 1, actually is representing 1 times 100, right? The third digit, 6, represents 6 times 10. And the last digit, 1, a 3, represents 3 times 1, right? Correct. And uh, I can use another expression to represent... Um, this decimal number, which is 6 times 10 to the power of 3 plus 1 times 10 to the power of 2 plus 6 times 10 to the power of 1 plus 3 times 10 to the power of 0, right? And you can see these numbers, these power numbers, 3, 2, 1, 0, are related to the positions of the digit, right? Uh, for instance, for the first digit, 6, it is at the position 3. The second digit, 1, is at the position 2. 6 is at the digit, is at the position 1. And the last one, 3, is at position 0. Uh, so the way to count position is from right to left and is starting from 0. Okay, so that's how we represent a decimal number uh, in our daily life. Uh, maybe you haven't noticed that, but that is actually how we uh, use decimal numbers, right? What about binary numbers? For binary numbers, we only have two digits. For decimal numbers, we have 10 digits, right? Uh, 10 digit means we have 10 different uh, numbers to represent a decimal number from 0 to 9. But for binary numbers, we only have two digits. And they are 0 and 1. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example of binary number. Uh, for instance, 1011. This is a binary number. Uh, so some people may ask how I can distinguish a uh, decimal number and a binary number. How, uh, if I just give you 1011, I may treat it as 1000 and 11, right? I may not treat it as a binary number. So uh, the easiest way to tell other people whether you are writing a binary number or decimal number is we use a notation here. 
Here, since I want to represent a binary number, I use a subs subscript 2. And here, uh, this number is a decimal number. I use a subscript 10 here. Okay, so the number inside the parentheses represent uh, the binary, uh, the, the, the number system, whether be 10 or 2. 10 means decimal number. 2 means binary number. Okay. Uh, and here, for binary numbers, it has a simpler, a similar uh, structure. The first one actually represents 1 times 2 to the power of 3. The second, the 0 represents 0 times 2 to the power of 2. And 1 represents 1 times 2 to the power of 1. And the last one represents 1 times 2 to the power of 0. Okay. So these power numbers, 3, 2, 1, 0, are also positions, are also positions of the corresponding digits, right? And the way to count the position is the same way we introduced before. It's from zero to, it's starting from zero, and it's starting from right to left, right? The first, uh, the fir the first digit on the right is in position zero. The next one is in position one, position 2 and position 3. Okay. Alright, so, uh, and another difference between decimal number and uh, binary number is here, you see, we use base 10, but for binary number, we use base 2, right? Because the largest number in you know, a binary number is uh, is 2, okay? All right, so here we have a method. So here we, uh, yes, we have a method to convert a binary number to decimal number. And that method is called uh, the, the decoding way, okay? Just like this one, 1011, that is one times two to the power of three plus 0 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0. That equals to 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1, which is 11 in decimal representation, right? So that's how we convert a binary number to the decimal number. Uh, some people may feel confused about this part, but let's find, let me give you more examples. Uh, so, for instance, let's count from 0 to 10 in binary numbers, okay? 0 for binary number is still 0, right? And you can convert 0, uh, binary 0, to decimal 0. That is 0 times 2 to the power of 0, right? Which is 0. And for 1 in binary number, that is 1 times 2 to the power of 0 which is one in decimal number, right? How about how about two, right? Some people may ask, uh, how can I represent two in binary numbers? Two, there's no number larger than one. There's no digit larger than one in binary numbers, which means if you want to represent two, you need to use two digits, right? Just like in binary numbers, if you want to represent a number larger, larger than nine, uh, Everyone knows we use 10, right? But have you noticed to represent a number larger than nine, we actually use two digits, right? We use one zero to represent a number larger than nine. The same thing for binary numbers. If you want to represent a number larger, larger than one, you have to use two digits. So here we use one zero in binary number to represent decimal two. Uh, we can verify that because one zero is equivalent to one times two to the power of one plus zero times two to the power of zero, and that equals to two in decimal numbers, right? How about three, right? How about decimal three? In binary numbers, decimal three is presented as one one because one times uh, 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0, that is 3, 
right? That is two plus one, which is three. Okay. Right, and uh, let's count until five. Okay, because um, the 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 tricky part is from here to here, right? You need to increase the number of digits to represent a number larger than one in binary numbers. All right, so let's represent four. To represent four here, uh, you need to increase another digit because we have one one. Uh, one is the largest number, like 99. If you want to represent a number larger than 99 in decimal numbers, you have to use three digits, which is 100, right? Here in decimal number, in binary numbers, if you want to represent a number uh, larger than three in decimal numbers, you have to increase, a, you have to increase another digit, which is 100. Zero, zero. One zero zero in binary number is four in decimal numbers. So let's verify that. So one zero zero actually is one times two to the power of two. Why we have two here? Because excuse me, this digit one is at position two, right? If you counting from from right to left and starting from zero, that's zero one two. So one is at position two. So at the power position, you have two to the power of two. And then plus zero, that equals to four, right? All right, the last one, one zero one in decimal, in binary number, that is five in decimal numbers because that is uh, one times two to the power of two plus one times two to the power of zero, which equals to five, okay? Right, so that's how we represent how that's how we convert a binary number to a decimal number, but how can we convert a decimal number back to the? How can we convert decimal number to binary number? How can we do the transformation, uh, reversely? Right, uh, so here we need to introduce. A method which is called repeatedly repeat division division by two method. So in this method, you actually repeatedly divide the decimal number by two, and the result is the uh, binary number. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, for instance, I want to represent 12, this decimal number, in binary representation. So I need to repeatedly divide 12 by 2. Here, I use this notation, this mark, to uh, represent the division operation, Okay, uh, which is like the half side, the... the um, the down half side, the left down half side of a rectangular, okay, and uh, this is the division number, and no, this is uh, on the top is the number to be divided, and on the left side is the division number. And on the bottom is the result. Okay. For instance, I want to divide 12 by 2. So 12 is the number to be divided, right? 2 is my division number. The result is 6. And I also record what is my, uh, what is my reminder. I record my reminder on, the, on this column, okay? Reminder. Uh, because 12 divided by 2, the result is 6, and the remainder is 0, right? So I write 0 here, which is in the same row with 6. And then I repeatedly divide uh, the number by 2. 6 divided by 2 equals to 3, and the remainder is still 0. 3 divided by 2 
the result is one. The remainder is one, and one divided by two. Now uh, some people will say that equals to zero point five, but here all numbers are integers. There's no fraction numbers. Okay, so uh, one divided by two, the result is zero, and the remainder is one. Right, so when you have zero, when you have zero in result, you stop the division, right? And the binary number is the remainders okay the binary number is the remainder and the order of this binary number is from bottom to top okay and that is one one zero zero so decimal 12 decimal 12 is one one zero zero in binary representation we can verify that by converting this binary number back to the decimal number uh, using the method I introduced here, right? 1100, zero, zero, uh, first we count positions of these four digits, uh, starting from right to left and starting with zero. So positions are zero, one, two, three. And that equals to one times two to the power of three. This digit is representing 1 times 2 to the power of 3, right? And this digit is representing 1 times 2 to the power of 2. And we have two zeros. 0 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 0. And that equals to 8 plus 4. And that is 12, right? All right, so uh, let's end up here. Um, so... Uh, in today's class, we review uh, three basic logic gates, and we uh, give you more examples of using De Morgan's laws to simplify a logic exploration. Uh, De Morgan's laws is De Morgan's law is a very useful tool uh, to simplify a logic exploration, especially when you have a very long and a complicated one. Uh, the the core idea of the Morgan's law is break the line, change the sign. If you have something plus something together bar, that is equivalent to separate bars times together, right? And also we introduce uh, decimal numbers and binary numbers and how we convert from decimal number to the binary number, right? All right, so uh, let's end up here. Um, in the next class, we're gonna introduce uh, how to handle uh, fraction numbers, how to handle fraction decimal numbers and the fraction binary numbers, and how about uh, binary numbers with polarities, okay? All right, uh, let me know if you have any questions for today's lectures, and uh, also if you have any questions for the homework, also please let me know, okay? All right, I'll see you guys next time.